imagine the first Easter morning was a lot like this. Cold, dark, so much had happened. The disciples, his mother Mary, all their hearts were broken. Jesus had been in the tomb for almost two days. But all that was about to change. Well, I couldn't think of a better way to begin our Easter morning with a prayer. Let's begin. Heavenly Father, Lord God, this is such a wonderful day. Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, for His resurrection, for your salvation, for eternal life, for the gift of being your children being in the family of God. Lord God, I pray you will bless everyone everywhere all over the planet as we all celebrate Easter Sunday morning. I pray that you'll bless each and every single one of us, especially this year when so many of us are unable to be, when I think all of us, most of us anyway, are unable to be in our church this morning like we always are, always have been, especially on Easter morning. Lord God, we love you. We praise you. And thank you and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh,
our gospel lesson this Easter Sunday is the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. Hear this now, the Word of God. Early on Sunday morning, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. She ran and found Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved. She said, They have taken the Lord's body out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. Peter and the other disciples started out for the tomb. They were both running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He stooped and looked in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he didn't go in. Then Simon Peter arrived and went inside. He also noticed the linen wrappings lying there, while the cloth that had covered Jesus' head was folded up and lying apart from the other wrappings. Then the disciple who had reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For until then, they still hadn't understood the scriptures that said, Jesus must rise from the dead. Then they went home. Mary was standing outside the tomb, crying, and as she wept, she stooped and looked in. She saw two white-robed angels, one sitting at the head and the other at the foot of the place where the body of Jesus had been lying. Dear woman, why are you crying? The angels asked her. Because they have taken away my Lord, she replied, and I don't know where they have put him. She turned to leave and saw someone standing there. It was Jesus but she didn't recognize him. Dear woman, why are you crying? Jesus asked her. Who are you looking for? She thought he was the gardener. Sir, she said, if you have taken him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will go and get him. Mary, Jesus said. She turned to him and cried out, Rabboni, which is Hebrew for teacher. Don't cling to me, Jesus said, for I haven't yet ascended to the Father. But go find my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene found the disciples and told them, I have seen the Lord. She gave them his message. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, surprise, can you believe it? I'm gonna tell you something. If you get to know Jesus, if you read the Bible, if you, if you read the Gospels and, and you learn about the life and the ministry of Jesus, one thing you're gonna learn really quickly is that Jesus is full of surprises. He meets and talks to people that most people don't understand why he would have anything to do with. He, 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 he is a miracle worker. He's a healer. He's a teacher. He preaches and teaches like no one has ever taught before. And today, this day, the most magnificent day of the Christian year, when Jesus rises and appears from the dead, who does he choose? Who does he choose to see first? Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene. It's unbelievable. Think about it. I mean, who could have Jesus have chosen if he was going to choose the first person to see him, right? He might have chosen his, his mother, right? Mary, the blessed mother Mary. He might have chosen her. He, he could have chosen Peter, the rock on which he was going to build his church. He could have chosen John, the disciple who he loved, right? But who does he choose? Mary Magdalene. What do we know about Mary Magdalene? She's gotten a bit of a reputation in, 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 in tradition, in church hit tradition. We've Somewhere along the line, people have gotten the sense or the idea that Mary Magdalene had once been a prostitute. I don't know if that's true. I, I don't think it is because I haven't seen it or read it in the Bible. There's also been movies and, and books and conspiracy theories that secretly Mary Magdalene was actually Jesus' wife or his girlfriend or somehow they were intimately connected and that she actually even had some of his children. I don't think that's true. I certainly didn't read that in the Bible. But I'll tell you what we do know about Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene, it's written 
was healed by Jesus from seven demons. Seven. Can you imagine what a mess she must have been to have had seven demons? And Jesus came, found her, and healed her from seven demons. We know that she was probably a well-to-do woman. She was probably fairly wealthy because the Bible also says that she supported Jesus. She supported his ministry. She helped the disciples. I, I, I imagine she helped them to, find, to, to purchase food so they had food to eat and places to stay whenever they stayed in town. And, and she supported him financially. And we know Mary Magdalene must have been an important woman in the, in the group of disciples because quite often whenever you find her in the scriptures and she's listed with the other women, many times she's listed first. And that typically, that often means that that person had a pride of place, that they were very important. We know Mary Magdalene was there when Jesus was crucified, when he hung on the cross in agony. We believe she was there when he was buried. And in this morning, we see that she was at the tomb that, that resurrection morning, looking for him. You know, we can learn a whole lot about being a disciple for Mary Magdalene. You know, there were so many rumors about her uh, being his Jesus' wife or girlfriend, being a prostitute. We don't know those things are true, but we do know what the Bible tells us about her and what the Bible clearly shows us is that Mary Magdalene loved Jesus, followed Jesus, and shared Jesus. You know she loved him. You know she followed him. She, she supported him financially. She was with him. Had, had obviously been a very important person in the group of, 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 the, of the entourage, of, of all of the disciples, especially of the women that followed Jesus, that heard him teach that were with him throughout all of his ministry. And you know, she followed him to the cross. When all the other disciples, right, except for John, when all the rest of them, and Peter, maybe he was hiding somewhere on the fringe, but the rest of them ran off. They ran off and left Jesus. They, they abandoned him. But not her, not Mary Magdalene. She was there. She was there when he hung on the cross. She was there when he was speaking his last words, when he groaned and let out his last words and committed his spirit to his Father. And she was there when he was buried. She was there that morning looking for him and was just torn to pieces when she came and found that the, the tomb was open and that he was gone. She wanted him, desperately wanted to know where he was, wanted to be sure that he was honored, that he was taken care of. I love it when, when it tells us that when, she, when, Jesus, uh, when she figured out who Jesus was, when she saw Jesus and thought he was the gardener and, and, and Jesus calls her by names, Mary. And bam, she knows who he is. Rabboni, teacher, with a capital T, teacher. And she, the first thing she does, I, I imagine, because we don't, it doesn't tell us this, but Jesus says, don't cling to me. And I can just picture, I can just see Mary Magdalene and thought Jesus was gone and just ran to him and dropped to her knees and wrapped her arms around his feet and his legs and just clung to him and wasn't going to let him go. She had lost him on the cross. She had lost him in the tomb. She had lost him that morning in this empty hole in the wall, this, this tomb. He had been gone and then suddenly he's appeared and she sees him and she recognizes him finally and she grabs a hold of him and she's not going to let go of him. And he tells her, Mary, don't cling to me. I have not yet ascended to my father. Right? I have not ascended to my father and your father, to my God and your God. I love it how Jesus tells us that, that because of what he's done, because of the resurrection, his father is our father. God is our God. We are his children. We are, Jesus is our brother. He's our savior. He's the risen Lord. It's absolutely amazing. And here's the thing. Jesus tells her, go, go and tell my brothers. And she goes. She goes and she shares the good news. She shares the gospel. 
she shares, I have seen the Lord. He's risen. I have seen him. She shares the news to the apostles. Apostle, the word apostle, people, the, 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 the men mostly who were apostles were, were the people who had been with Jesus in his ministry and were given the mission to tell people about Jesus. They'd been with Jesus and they had the mission to go and tell about Jesus. And if you think about it, you know, we think of apostles, you think about the, the 12 disciples, then minus Judas Iscariot, the betrayer, right? And, and, and the one they added, and then, uh, then uh, uh, later on, Paul comes along and he's thought of as an apostle. But think about it. Mary Magdalene was sent to tell the apostles the good news that Jesus Christ is risen. Mary Magdalene is the apostle to the apostles, isn't she? She's absolutely amazing. Here's something significant. Here's something that you might not have noticed before when you've read this story. When the two disciples ran back to the tomb, when they got there and they looked inside, they saw that the, the cloth that Jesus had been wrapped in was laying still there by itself. But they say distinctly that the cloth that had been on Jesus' face was neatly folded up and set to the side. Neatly folded up and set to the side. That's significant. Because when people in that time, in that day, they knew that when you were eating and you were going to get up and leave the table, your napkin, you would just take it and kind of leave it in a bunch and lay it there and go off and do what you're going to have to do. I'll never forget it. And Heather and I, I took Heather to the Capitol Grill for one of our anniversary dinners. And it was, we've been to some nice restaurants, but I'll tell you, the Capitol Grill, they take service to this level. And we were seated at this beautiful table and we're having this beautiful dinner and Heather needed to go powder her nose for a moment so she excused herself and she got up and she just had her napkin and she just kind of laid it on the table in a bunch and wasn't even there about two minutes and suddenly a, not even our waiter another server comes by and sees that napkin stops comes over and takes it and neatly folds it up and places it, it was beautiful it was like origami just takes this napkin perfectly folded beautiful delicate thing and this beautiful shape and sets it right in the place where Heather's going to be when she returns. I, was, I just sat there. I was just amazed. And when Heather came back, she, she noticed it. And I just smiled and I said, oh yeah, we're, we're in the high cotton now here. This is a, this is a nice place. Well, when, when a person back then would leave the table, if they were, if they were um, going to come back, they would take that napkin and they would actually fold it nicely and leave it there. They weren't done yet. They would take their napkin and they would fold it and lay it on the table and go off and do whatever it is they have to do and come back. If they were done and they were gone, they would just leave the napkin a big old mess on the table. But Jesus had specifically taken that cloth and folded it neatly and set it to the side. And it was a beautiful, interesting way for Jesus to tell everyone that came and saw and looked in there that he was going to return. He was gone for a moment, but he was coming back. He was returning. And one day he is going to return. Mount Nebo, this is such a beautiful morning. I wonder if you've figured out yet where I am. I can't wait for us to be able to return here into, oh boy, when we get back in here and we have our first Sunday at church, we are going to have a resurrection Sunday. We are going to celebrate. We're going to sing. We're going to have a party. But today is Easter. Uh, in your home, wherever you are, celebrate today. Celebrate the risen Savior today. Go outside. When you get a chance, take your phone, take yourself a, a little Easter selfie and, and, and celebrate the risen Lord. Take that picture, will you? And, and post it on the Facebook where I posted the video for Mission on the Mount today. I would really appreciate it. I would love to see your smiling faces and to see the joy of the Lord on your faces this morning. My friends, He is risen. He is risen indeed.
Thank you again so much for joining us on Mission on the Mount today. Happy Easter. God bless you. Thank you so much for tuning in today. See you next time.